Hey, it's Kim from Never Enough Notes. And I'm with We Are The City, who, when, when was the last time you slept? It's been probably, under my calculations, 30 hours, but, and it's going to be a lot longer because we play at midnight tonight, so... That's, that's, many, that's many hours from now, yeah. I think many, we'll, 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 go to, we'll go up to... We'll easily go to 40 here. Oh, easily. So you guys are currently promoting your third album, Above Club, which came out in November. And there's an interesting story about the social media experiment, which went on with the recording. Like, tell us about that. Go ahead, Kim McKenzie. Ah, hello. Uh, well, we, we got a little tricksy. We had a little fun. And uh, we sort of lied, I guess. You know, it, was, it was more fun. It was a fib. Really, White it was a, You know what it was? A story. We created a story. It was a fiction. We created yes. a fictional story about the truth behind the album. Uh, that was that we went to Serbia, recorded above a nightclub. That's why the album is called Above Club. But also, well, now I'm digressing. Anyway, so we created a story that we went to Serbia, recorded above a club, and live streamed the entire. Uh, thing which is which was 15 days 360 hours and that was available 24 hours a day to see us in this room all the time live live, live. but at, it turned out actually that we were not recording in that time and it was not live it was pre-recorded and in fact we had had the record for you know something like six to eight months finished completed and we were planning to release it but it was part of the rollout, man. It was, it was part it of the It made fun. it interesting for the people who follow it. Instead of yeah. just another band recording another record, oh my goodness, yeah. so many bands recording another record and just taking photos of themselves in the studio. We wanted to do something different. Would you really go to Serbia for your fourth album, maybe? Would that be a thing? Sure. If somebody... Uh, Offers us a studio and a place to sleep, and that's it. Yeah, that's all we need. That's yeah. all daily soup. You guys really need your sleep. <laughs> yeah. And then soup and soup would be great. Soup. Favorite soup? Uh, borscht. Borscht. Oh, yes. Borscht. <laughs> no. Is that like the really? Serbian thing? No, or no. that's Ukrainian. Well, oh, I think it's uh, Polish as well. Polish. Eastern it's European. That, that general area yeah. of you know, Eastern Europe. Yeah. So, like, um, speaking Borscht. of Bosch, this is not following on whatsoever. <laughs> How do you guys stay innovative? So, you know, you've recorded three albums, you've got you know, an EP, and th that kind of thing. How do you make sure you're still creating something fresh and new? I think we just focus on what we want to try to make. And that actually comes a lot from other artists we listen to. Like and you. Like anything from Beyonce to Death Grips or Kanye West or... Um, there's a there's, there's like, a lot some great yeah. ambient artists yeah. like uh, Brian Eno or a new one that we've been getting into is William Basinski really like that yeah or there's this kind of noise guy Empty Set Empty Set uh -huh. really yeah. cool but also I mean the classics Radiohead throwing the Pink Floyd in there Super Tramp you know like all yeah. that stuff just yeah. dash it in and then I think it's also about <laughs> what you don't soup. hear too into the borscht. Into the borscht. You got to put in the borscht and then add some spices of your own. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end, you know, you put in all these different ingredients and you've got your own. You got a crazy you borscht. You have your own uh, borscht brand. <laughs> we are the borscht. <laughs> we are the, yeah, we are the borscht. There you are, fourth album name. This is all coming together beautifully. I yeah. want credits. So, like, what is your trademark as a band? Like, what would you say your trademark, your stamp is? Is it your live shows? Is it a particular part of the sound? Um, I think it's just like, uh, Never knowing what to expect next. Yeah. Including me. I don't <laughs> yeah. know what to expect next. I think we, like, we really like to make music that we want to listen to and we like to play shows that we enjoy playing. So it's all about just, uh, I guess, expressing ourselves to like the max potential uh -huh. that we can do at that moment. Uh -huh. Yeah. So like, when you're doing a live show, how does a set list come together? How do you sit down and do you have certain ones that always feature? Or I mean, how does it work? Well, today we... We're on stage. We were supposed to start playing. The sound guy was like, "Are you ready now?" Good and we, accent. Thank you. And then we hadn't started. We we hadn't finished checking, but we said okay. And then we looked at each other. We said okay, and we counted out the songs we wanted to play, and then just played them in that order. That's yeah. what happened today. Yeah. Awesome. But usually, it was sort of it's part of the presentation, so we come up with a set. Usually in rehearsal before we. Yeah, not, that's not the usual. That's one. not the usual. But the, the we, use, we can, as we say, in we Canada, can do the that. Use. The use. The, the use. use. The used. Yeah. And what are your Great favorite band. songs, like individually, your favorite songs to play live? Um, I really like playing, well, I like playing them all. I can't pick. Sorry, that's not a good answer. 
We've got this kind of like, it's not a really like pop in tune or anything. It's not that upbeat, but it's called Everything uh, Changes. You, t- you took mine. I think I just like that one the most because we made it quite a long time ago and we didn't really play it until recently. So it feels the most like I'm playing a song that I just like because we just made it because we liked it and then we kind of shelved it. It was yeah. just on the record, you know? But now we get to play it and I, I just like it. By shelved it, you mean put it on a record and put that record, put the on, record the shelves. on the shelf. Yeah. yeah. On as many shelves as possible. I don't know, 100? <laughs> no, that'd be good. That'd be really good. Awesome. So, one final question. When you did your recording of your, in, in Serbia, Serbia, I mean, a fictional nightclub, which sounds amazing, by the way, you said you recorded a really long film and you, you siphoned it off to people and they bought it. Like, what was that about? Well, it was like, so when we did the live stream of the recording process, because it was pre-recorded, that meant that essentially we had to edit it and script it and make music make music for it and export and it and have an actor even have though actors. even though like the actor is just like the landlord who just comes by you know because we're making it realistic or like the music is just the nightclub music because we're supposed to be above a club you know blaring through so it's not like a soundtrack but right, but it's, se, it is per se yeah. yeah and i mean so it is a, a film in a sense and so we decided to sell it because we put so much time into mm-hmm. it and we sold 15 copies <laughs> for 100 bucks each so Big but sale, then, big but sale. then I mean the uh, the the hard drives themselves cost eighty bucks, so we look. We're, you're looking at a profit of about, but not if you calculate man hours, three hundred sixty of those. Hold on, you're looking at the profit of a smile and a, a, and smile, an yeah. achievement. Yes, yeah, it's su- yeah, succeeding in the goal. 